Hi there, my name is Aaron Short. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is Monday and it is June the 12th. Hope you're all doing well. I'm doing well. I've had a very busy weekend and the reason I'm going live today, just so you know, is that I have another gig, a new gig tonight in a hotel and uh, it clashes with the time that I go live normally. So rather than not go live, I thought I'd bring it forward to one o'clock and that way, if you're going to tune in at four o'clock and I'm not there, then you can always watch this replay I'm doing right now. And you can't ask a live ch um, question, but you can hear what I've been up to, my thoughts on this week's topic. And you can always leave me a question in the comments below or come back next Monday, even better. <laughs> so I hope you're doing well. I want to start off with an update on the Bose S1 Pro Plus because I spent the whole of last week's episode talking about it. And it's obviously a hot topic. That video had a lot of views. People are obviously searching for these, this thing and they want to know thoughts about it. Remember, this is only my thoughts about the product, but I feel like I owe you a follow-up video about what happened after last week's live stream. So I'm going to start with that and then I'll say hi to everybody and we'll get on with the regular questions. I am drinking water today because I always forget to drink water and it's always a good idea to drink a lot of water before you sing. Especially if you've been singing all weekend and your voice is as low as mine is right now. So, it was really cool. I did the live review last week and I really enjoyed doing that because it was spontaneous. It was based on my personal experiences with the Bose S1 Pro Plus. And there was a lot of new people here watching and asking questions, which was awesome. And uh, Bose have been great. Like right after I finished the stream, they sent me an email said they'd watched the stream and wanted to get more information on the on the problems that I'd faced. I guess they saw it because I posted this uh, live stream link in the Bose user group. So I guess they saw that I was doing this live review, and I'm really glad. I'm really glad that Bose watched the video and took my feedback on board. Again, I want to say it again. This is my experience with the product, and my main issue was with this was the wireless um, aspect of it. The thing is, wireless, as we know, can work fine in some rooms and not in others. I can only base this on my own experience. My whole channel is just my own experience. And sometimes I feel like I'm crazy. Sometimes I feel like I'm... I mean, okay, with some products, I am too fussy, right? With some products, I'll say, well, there's a small finish floor, and that's terrible. And people will say, well, that's wood. That's what happens. Like, no... No guitar is perfect. That's one thing. But when you have something like a wireless system, even though we all are aware that wireless can have issues, I mean, how many times have your, has your cell phone lost connection to the Wi-Fi? How many times have your wireless earbuds cut out, right? Wireless is not a cable. Even cables can go wrong. But wireless is uh, more susceptible to problems than a cable. We know that. It's obvious, but we've also all tried wireless systems that have worked reliably. And when you spend the kind of money that you spend on the Bose with this wireless uh, transmitter, you're looking at a lot of money. So I think it's fair enough to expect that to work reliably. Maybe not 100%, but maybe 97%. And I would say in my experience, it's worked more like 67%. So by all means, I always invite the feedback from the viewers. If you bought one of these and you bought the wireless system and it worked fine, feel free to let me know in the comments because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here to learn as well. But I did have the problem. They did reach out. They were very interested in helping me out, which is awesome. You might say, well, of course they did that. You might say, of course they did that. Your video kind of criticized the product and, and, and wasn't ideal. Yeah, but you wouldn't believe how many companies have asked me to review products that they've sent to me. And I've said to them, this don't work very well. And they've said to me, well, it's your fault. Basically, sling your hook, get lost. And Bose didn't do that. Bose could have, could have chosen to ignore me. They could have put some snidey comments saying that I was expecting too much or I was using it wrong, as I've been told by other companies in the past. They didn't do that. They chose to say, right, Aaron, we have tested this. We've worked on it a lot. 
we're surprised you're having this, but we understand you're having this issue and we want to make it better. And I love that ad attitude. So the way it stands at the moment, um, they are going to work on the wireless. They tell me they're going to work on the wireless aspect of the speaker. And when there's an update available, I'll happily try it again at my shows. And again, I've only tried it at one show, but this was a large empty room, not many people in the city. I don't, you know, I have no reason to believe why it shouldn't work there. If I wanted to spend more time on this, I could take another wireless system and try it there as well. Maybe it's just that room. Maybe there's a wireless router next to me or something. I don't know. But of course, we can always say, what if, what if, what if. For me, I want the gear to work. And again, no gear is perfect, but I want the thing that I buy to do the thing it says it will do. And with this speaker, the wireless aspect is a big component of it. Now, if you don't want the wireless, do I still recommend it? Yes, definitely. If you're not going to buy, remember, the wireless modules are optional. You have to buy them separately. How does this compare to the original S1 Pro? Well, it's a bit lighter. It's got way more features. So if you're a fan of the S1 Pro and you want more features, then then get this, right? But full disclosure, full, full disclosure, yesterday and my gig tonight, I did take the EV Everse 8. And the reason is, yes, it's three pounds heavier. It's a bigger box, but therefore it does have a bigger sound. It does have more headroom. It has the app in there with more, um, more effects and things than the Bose has. So for me at the moment, I'm sticking by the EV Everse 8. And I'm only telling you that because I feel like people come here wanting to know what I actually use, right? I don't want, I don't want to be a channel where I just talk about, oh, here's the latest and greatest, go buy it. No, what am I actually using? I'm actually using the Everse 8. Now, I would rather take a full PA or a column system, but tonight I'm going to take public transport. And the only way I can do that, which by the way, isn't a fun thing to do, is to take my cable bag, my guitar, my mic stand on my back, and the Everse 8. I could not take a QSC 8.2, despite that sounding even better. Still, I just can't do it. It's too heavy to carry um, on the subway. If I take an Uber, I would take, the, I would take that instead. But if you need to carry a speaker, the Everse 8 is still an awesome option, and I've had no problems with it. Yes, it doesn't have the built-in wireless, but the features they're advertising that it comes with all work very well. So having said that, I would have taken the the Bose because it's lighter and I love the features and the wireless element of it, but I'm not going to recommend or use it until I get that update from them that fixes that issue and then I'll revisit the product. I feel I owe it to them um, to do that and follow up on it and, and the viewers too. I, 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 I hyped it up so much when I heard about the Bose. I was so excited for it, as you know, based on the videos I released that I feel I have to follow through now and let you know if they do indeed make it better for my users. So that's an update on the Bose S1 Pro Plus, because I know people are going to come back from last week's video and wonder what happened. That's what happened. Excellent response from Bose. Probably the best response I've ever had from a video where I've actually given some constructive criticism. And now it's up to them. Now the ball is in their court. And only one more thing do I have to say about that. Is this, and I've, I've said it many times, I'll say it again. In my world, I wouldn't have YouTubers review and demo products. I think it's a complete waste of time. Not a complete waste of time, but let's face it. A, a, a guitar, a speaker in a controlled environment with the right microphone, the right take of a video. Anything can sound good, right? How does this stuff actually work in practice? I always said from the, from the beginning that I would make videos about using the gear at my gigs. And I kind of got away from that a little bit. But that is the most important thing. Can you make money with it? And with the Everse 8, I haven't really spoken about it. I did an initial unboxing and review, but I've been using it every week to pay my bills. That's incredible. And it has they have to have a they have to have credit for that. All right. So that is it to me, that's the most important thing. What do I use to pay the bills? And the Everse 8 has been that very thing for a long time. As has the QSC, as has the Cole Clark. All these things that I rarely even talk about on here because I want to talk about the newest and latest and greatest because that's what's fun, right? But my point that I was trying to make is rather than pay YouTubers to make demos and reviews of this gear, what I think they should do is choose select individuals to critique the gear, almost make them the YouTube video review for them privately 
before the product is released. So many companies have said, you want to feature our new product, and I've found something I didn't like about it, and I've said to them, I wish you sent it to me a year before, because then I could have told you what I felt about it, and you, you may have changed. And I'm not saying that I know everything, but maybe the feedback I gave you, you could have made a change before you released it. I really feel strongly about that. And that's obviously a lot of YouTubers don't want to do that because the problem is you make the YouTube video, you get the you get the um, the, the the scoop on the latest product because it gets the views. Look at the look at the bows, right? I've got loads of views on that because it's hot. Everyone wants to know: is it good? Am I going to buy it? Well, if if the companies paid people like me to try the products before they went into production, then when the product comes out, hopefully it's ready to go, and, and it's just everything that's advertised is amazing and it is. A fantastic thing and the youtuber will know what to say about it they've had a lot of experience and time with it and um that i mean by the way that's not something i'd want to do for free i'd expect to be you know you'd have to you'd have to pay people to do that because you'd be spending a lot of your time at your gigs reporting back about the product and also of course if something goes wrong at your gig that could impair your your work which is not good but that to me is a better use of resources than promoting something once it's been released and kind of just giving a, an overview of the product it really means nothing i was just looking at the the rev d25 amp that seems like a great amp for a gigging musician but the only videos about it are the paid demos like no one yet has posted a video where they got it and said i've been using it on my cover band for a month and it's paying my bills to me that is the most important thing what pays the bills is the most important thing with gear more over anything else Maybe that's just me because that's what I do for a living, but I really feel strongly about that, as you can tell. So that's where I'm at with the Bose S1 Pro Plus. I'm going to put that to bed now. It's a good unit. I, lo I praise them for what they've done with it. It needs some work to make me happy. And if they get to that point, I'm happy to try it again and talk about it again. Until then, it is what it is. It's, an, it's, a, it's the lightest speaker. It's, it's got the best or it's got the coolest feature set. But from a practical standpoint, I'm using the... Uh, EV, Everse 8 at the moment. That's been just solid, dependable, loud, loud enough, and it's, it's doing the job. So let's leave that there. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the chat. And uh, we'll get started. I'll say hello. And I've got an email question for today as well, which I'll bring up in a little bit. So T says, hey, Aaron, how you doing, T? Good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Hello all, greetings from Ireland. Good stuff. David, it's been a, it's been a, been a hot minute, David. How you doing? Good, af good morning, afternoon, everyone in the chat. Good to see you, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Rexomatic is here. Greetings from Phoenix. And John says, hi, how you doing, John? Patsy Smith, it's a hot Suffolk. Much nicer time to watch live. Yeah, so if my Monday gig ends up being a regular thing, I may change the time of the live stream to one o'clock. Uh, it's it's really hard when you do gigs to know you, know, you you don't really have a regular slot you can always do because you might be asked to do a gig. Thank you, T. Yes, yeah, a nice gig I got today. I'm looking forward to it. People value your opinion. The thing is, John, I always say I want to talk about gear that I love because it's easy to talk about, and I don't want to be negative. And I was thinking the other day, oh, here we go again. I'm going to have to be negative about the, the bows. But I guess I'm not being negative about it, am I? I'm, I'm giving constructive criticism. And to be fair, it may be a little bit negative towards bows because obviously it's not ideal that I'm saying that that doesn't work for me. But it's, it's positive to you. It's positive to a lot of people. Someone said to me last week, they can't return the stuff they buy in their country. So they rely on the reviews that say if something's ready to go or not. Because it would be terrible if you bought something and couldn't return it. And it didn't work the way you expected it to. We, we're very fortunate in the USA because like, I've got Sweetwater behind me here. They have that month return policy. You can get something. You can really test it out. And if it just doesn't work for you, you can return it. Um, some, some places you don't have that luxury. And... I guess I do depend on that for these reviews as well because I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. I just couldn't afford to buy stuff and be stuck with it and then sell it at a huge loss just to make YouTube videos. It would be silly. Um, but I like I like I like my relationship with Sweetwater. I've been a customer for ten years. I've spent a lot of money with them. 
I now have my affiliate links with them. It works out nicely for both of us. And um, I'm still just buying the gear as I always have done. They don't send it to me. I still buy it. And I still have that option of returning it. Sometimes I don't make a video if I just don't like If I just don't like a guitar, I'm not going to make a video and say, well, I just don't like it and send it back. I don't want it to look like I'm buying stuff just to have content. But if it's something that I really thought was going to work out for me and it really didn't, like the Rodecaster Pro, that really let me down as an audio interface. So I just felt I had to make that video. And I lost money when I sold it because I, I was out of my return policy by that point. So that's what we're trying to avoid, like um, buying stuff that we have to sell at a loss. That's, that's a real drag. Uh, Michael says, Everse 8 is great. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a great speaker. It really is. Of all the battery-powered portable speakers, you know, it's the heaviest in a way of, of the three big ones, the Bose, the JBL, and the Everse. It is the heaviest. Um, or is it, is it actually, is the JBL the heaviest? But it's around the weight of the JBL. It's around the size of the JBL. It might be a pound lighter than the JBL, but it is louder than those two speakers. It's like 450 watts versus 150 watts. And you can feel when you're playing, it's got more power to it. I do like the Bose sound, I have to say, but the Everse is more like a conventional PA speaker. And it looks more like a conventional PA speaker as well. It's a good unit. It's, it's, it's been great. Isaac, how you doing? Good to see you here. Exactly. More gear needs to be field tested by working musicians. You know, the other thing is some people have, I won't name, I don't, I don't name names, but some people have told me in the past that some of the people that do test gear are kind of, they're too scared to be honest, you know. They're too scared to say, you know, this don't work very well. <laughs> because some musicians that, that are asked to test gear for companies feel like grateful they've been asked to test the gear and they want to say good things. But that doesn't help anyone. Uh, you just got to be positive. Let's let's talk about the bags hi-fi. My biggest criticism is that it's feeding back for me the way I use it. Um, but the users that have bought it since, I've not seen a single user say it feeds back for them. So there we go. Maybe that's a subjective thing about the room you're playing in, the guitar it's in. I'll still stand by what I said. For me, of all the pickups I've ever used, well, not all of them, but of, of that, that type of pickup I've used, it feeds back as much as that style of pickup. Yes, it can be fixed with a notch filter, and most gigging musicians have a mixer with a notch filter on them, so it's not an issue. It's just that in my particular use case, I often plug in and don't have anything to plug through, and I want something that's stable. For me, the Cole Clark and the Anthem are more stable still. But many people aren't talking about that. So I find it interesting as well to sit back and watch what the what people say. But again, this channel is all about my experience. And I think wireless dropouts is a bit different to feedback from the... With, with acoustic guitar, it could be the volume, where you're standing, the guitar. A wireless dropout is a wireless dropout, right? It, it's, it's happened. There's, there's, it's not me causing it. So it's, it's really your environment that you're in. And again, if you live in the countryside, you might have no problems at all. But if you live in a city, that's when you're going to get more problems. There's more interference around. Who Ninja says, I've just got a Katana 100 Mark II, and it's totally ready to gig and pay for itself. I'm very happy. Yeah, I've reviewed that one. It's great. It's loud. It's so affordable. So affordable for a 100 watt amp. And you can get the two foot switches now. So one foot switch can be for channel switching and one can be for effects. It's, to it's, it's, it's great. So and, and a lot of the boss stuff is like that, affordable and gig ready. Not everything, but a lot of the stuff. So yeah, if you want something to gig with, the katanas are awesome. Mark said, how would you compare the vocals, S1 and EV8? So the thing is with these speakers is that you can EQ them. Like the, the Bose doesn't have much EQ. It has a bass and a treble, and then it has the tone match presets now. So if you go through those, you can find something that you'll like. My honest feeling with the Bose versus the EV8 is that the EV8 is more like a regular PA speaker. It's got that kind of punchy, solid sound, and then it's got that really nice built-in mixer app where you can tweak the mid, the parametric EQ, run a preset. You can really dial it in, which is what I used to say about the JBL, but I, I do prefer the Everse 8 to the JBL. Um, but the Bose S1 is almost a unique animal. It's 
I've been describing it as like you but louder. It it kind of just to me the the S one and the Bose stuff just kind of makes you sound bigger than you are, louder than you are in the room. And I really like that. It's more kind of transparent. Having said that, I can make it clip. Like when I have my mic plugged in and turn the volume to about 11, it's starting to clip already. I have a really loud voice, by the way, and I sing right into the microphone. But that shows you the headroom is starting to give in. Whereas with the Everse 8, I've yet to make it clip. I hear it start to compress a little bit, but at, at much louder volumes. So to me, I, I would describe it like that. The S1 Pro is more of a portable, um, a portable solo performer's amplification system to make you sound louder and bigger. The Everse 8 is more of a conventional PA speaker. And I, I was to make it clear again, the Everse 8 will not beat a QSE K8.2. I'm not saying it's a professional uh, grade 2000 watt PA speaker replacement. But what it is, is a portable battery powered PA solution that um, yeah, you can carry around and it's got the built-in effects and the built-in battery charger and everything for your phone. It's so good at all that stuff. And I, I really like it for that. So once again, I would still rather take a QSC K8.2. For me, those things are killer. But they weigh 30, 28 pounds. 28 pounds. And the Everse 8 weighs 17 pounds and has all those other features in the box. So that's why I like it. I'd be happy to use the Everse 8 as a monitor as well. It sounds really good. So Isaac says, I just got the wireless transmitters. Work flawlessly while testing them in my home studio. However, I did have an issue when testing them in the living room when next to an internet router. There we go. Yeah, I, I must say, I didn't have a problem at home either. Usually I, I do, but I didn't with those. I had no dropouts at home. And at home, there's a ton of internet traffic around. So I thought I would be good. But, and yet in this venue, with less people, you know, well, not less people, with not many people, I still had the, the dropouts. Now, it is possible that in that venue, I was near a router. I don't know where their router is situated, but that's still not really a, a solution for me. Um, there's been some other wireless companies in the past that have said, don't play next to a wireless router, but how can you go to a gig and ask the manager to move your setup space because you're next to a, a wireless router? That doesn't seem like a very good idea to me. You'll probably get fired if you say that. I wish you would make a detailed follow-up review on your success with the Everse 8. Yeah, I should really do that. I, every week I say I should talk more about the gear that I'm, I'm gigging with regularly, and I really should do that. But the truth is, <laughs> it's a bit like the old saying, right? No news is good news. The absolute truth is that I bought the Everse 8, and I've just been using it. It's wonderful. You know, I bought the Q, Q, Quad Cortex. I've just been using it at home. It sounds wonderful. I bought the Cole Clark. I've just been using it. That's the truth of it. When, when you don't hear much about gear, sometimes that means it's great. No news is good news. Right? I spent the whole, I did a whole live stream last week on the Bose because I wanted to talk about the issues that I'd found as well as what I thought was cool about it because it's a new product. But I haven't spoke about the Everse 8 because it just works. The app is great. It's stable. Unlike the JBL app, which drives me crazy, the EV app is stable. It works really well. The speaker sounds really good it looks professional it weighs a good weight you know it's 17 pounds I, I mean you could have two of those a lot of people criticize it for not having the three inputs but i really don't think we should be running a duo through one of these i think we i think we're asking too much these days i think we've got to keep it real i've already said that the qsc k8.2 blows away the Everse 8 right it's a different product but if you're going to run a duo with say two mics or two guitars yeah, you could probably run that into a, into a mixer and run that into one QSC K8.2. It's still not ideal, but you could do it. I've done it many times. But to run that many things through something like the, the Bose, which is only 150 watts, or even the EV, which is 450 watts, I think you're asking too much. I did it last week at a small bar. I ran a drum and my guitar and mic through the Everse 8. It worked really well, but that was a really small room. I really think if you're going to buy a 17 pound speaker, you should buy one each. So if you have a duo, I think you should buy two and take a small mixer like the Elite Acoustics mixer, which is incredible, by the way, the little tiny, tiny one, which can probably be powered by the Everse 8 as well. There you go. That's an amazing portable PA system with four inputs or more and lots of flexibility. I think we're asking too much personally to put a duo through one 400, 450 watt speaker, but that's just me. I wouldn't do that. 
So I see these as really for the, the solo user. Maybe a singer with you. What I tend to do is run something like a play acoustic or the Voice Live 3 pedal into one input on the EV. That then frees up the second input where I could have a guest singer with me. And that can work well. But I think to expect to run three like full range instruments through a little tiny speaker, I, I, I think it's unrealistic in my opinion, depending on how loud you're playing, of course, and what you expect from it. Uh, Zane's here. How you doing, Zane? Good to see you. Here we go. I'm glad you had the same issue as me, so I'm not crazy. The issue was an intermittent static popping sound. I was also testing the line out into another PA, so I'm not sure what caused the problem. Actually, that's not what I had. I just had the signal just drop out completely. So the guitar was just playing and then nothing. And then back again. <laughs> not ideal. Like I said, they were very adventurous to put a 2.4 gigahertz system into a speaker. Some companies have done this, and I've always said it's not a good idea. Like Line 6 have one in the, in the PodGo wireless. I don't think it's a great idea to do that. And I had problems with their system as well. I have, I've had problems with most systems. On the Acoustic Guitar Forum, they're telling me that I expect way too much from a 2.4 gigahertz system. And that I should have known it was going to drop out. But I said, no, I have to disagree. The Sennheiser system is amazing. Have I showed you this before? This XSW system from Sennheiser works incredibly well. I've had like one dropout since in five years or something. It's been amazing. Absolutely incredible. But the, problem, the only problem with this system, and I don't even mind the price. I know it's expensive, but it's so good. It sounds incredible. It's, it's well made. It's, it's, it's amazing. But the problem with this system is so, so silly to me is that the battery is in there. You can actually remove that cover with force, and you've got a green battery inside. So and the problem is the battery seemed to go bad after a year for me, so that you, only, you only get an hour of battery life after a year. It's terrible. I was playing a gig, and, and I lost the, the microphone one completely because the battery was too old. It was only a year old or something. And what you have to do... So I wouldn't mind if, I, if they sold me the batteries. I wouldn't mind just replacing them every six months. I would happily do that. It's so good. But the problem is they don't, and they're kind of soldered inside. You can remove them if you know if you know what you're doing. That's not really something I feel comfortable to do. So what you have to do is send it back to them. Within a year, you get a replacement, or if you pay $75 any time after that, they'll send you a replacement. That's so frustrating to me. This one is 2.4 gigahertz. This one is incredible. This is the gold standard of wireless systems that are portable for me. But the batteries suck. Like, what were they thinking? <laughs> so awful like i've had to stop using it so it's so frustrating to me that there is a 2.4 gigahertz system that's incredible but i don't want to use it because the batteries are so terrible that's so annoying like just give us a user replaceable battery or find a battery that lasts longer the battery in my apple watch is still working great after five years so why can't they make these batteries last well for five years it doesn't make any sense to me such a shame. These XSW systems are the gold standard, but the batteries they're using are not very good. And I've had several of them um, have that problem now. Sucks. Would you rather test products for live show use for fees from, or continue reviewing gear and interacting with your audience? That's the thing. If I'm reviewing, if I'm giving feedback to companies uh, behind the curtain of, of unreleased products, I'm not going to be interacting with people. Um, and that's a different job. That's a consultancy job. I just think that'd be beneficial to companies to do that. I, I guess what I'm trying to say, Rex, is that I'm fed up. I'm fed up of all this gear being a complete letdown half the time. It just seems unbelievable to me. There's so much gear. I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about bows here. Let's talk about the Quad Cortex. They released that bare bones. So much stuff they promised was missing. That's so awful that they promised features that were not there. Now, three years later, a lot of the features are there and coming soon. And they've done a great job. They've done such a great job that I bought another one and I'm loving it. But they, that was a letdown in the beginning. I think too many products are released too soon these days that are not ready to go. And I think that's, that's the real issue. I've heard that the, the new Tone Dexter 2 pedal for acoustic guitar has been delayed because the um, James May, the creator, is not happy yet. You know, he's got a few things to iron out. Then he'll release it. That's the way to do it, in my opinion. Uh, Zane says, what an amazing moment to share and learn from others, their experiences and inputs, which is appreciated, mate. Yeah. 
Well, that's why we're here, isn't it? We're, I'm here because I like talking about this stuff. And without new releases, I'd have nothing to talk about. So don't get me wrong. I do enjoy talking about this stuff, uh, the, the, the new releases. It's just very disappointing when you find the problems. And to be fair, I'm a reviewer. I, go, I do go out looking for problems. That's, that kind of hinders my enjoyment these days. As soon as I get something, I'm looking for the problem. But at the same time, some of these problems are genuine problems. Some are not genuine problems. And I sometimes stand back and think to myself, yeah, I'm, being, I'm expecting too much. But some problems are problems and they, they need to be um, addressed. T says, I don't think you're being negative about Bose. You're giving an honest opinion after using it at a live gig and you you praised for it worked. You praised it for what worked well and what you liked about it. Yeah, I actually I will admit last week's live stream was one of my favorite I've ever done. Because I just said, look, I bought the product, I'm going live, I've tried it at a gig. There's some things here that I really genuinely love, and there's some things here that didn't work for me. I really, really felt good about that video. Um, it's just that looking back. Obviously, I wish it had been all positive because I want to use the product, but it wasn't, and there we go. So <laughs> I trust that people want to know as well that I'm having uh, the experience I'm having. Kooky, been a while, my friend. If I understand well, you spend two times $149 to have wireless bug and you get dropouts. Yes, that's what happened. And then some people said that's too expensive, but look at the system behind me that is my gold standard of this kind of system. And it is 2.4 gigahertz. $319. So I don't think Bose are overcharging for their system. And in fact, I like their transmitter design more than the design of the Sennheiser behind me. But if it don't work um, reliably, that's a problem. But yeah, that, that's the gist of it, Kuki. Thank you, my friend. Yep. I had a busy I had a really busy week. I played Friday, I played Thursday night, Friday night. I played Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning. This afternoon and tomorrow night. And then I'm off Wednesday. Yeah, I'm very happy. Live music seems to be uh, making a comeback. In a very strong way. Which is a, a, a huge relief <laughs> for musicians everywhere. Kooky says, maybe the Sennheiser emits more powerful radiations and drains the battery life. Well, the battery life on the Sennheiser when you get a brand new unit is four hours. Which is acceptable. It's not great for uh, wedding and long gigs. Three or four hours for most gigs is fine. I think it's four hours. That's fine for like a bar gig. In America, most bar gigs are three hours long. So it's fine. I'm not talking about the battery life day to day, Kuki. I'm saying that after a year or so, it loses its ability to hold a charge. So after one year, the Sennheisers, I've had two now. They, they only last for an hour. So I've been playing and they've just completely died on me without warning. That's a real problem. But they are 2.4 gigahertz, to follow on from the conversation we were having on the Acoustic Guitar Forum. They are 2.4 gigahertz, and they do work incredibly well, and they sound awesome. But they, the batteries they're using can't hold their battery life. That's the problem. Let's see if people agree with me here. Let's take a look at the reviews and see if people agree. So you see very mixed reviews here. And if we go down to three stars, where well, I'm sure people will start complaining about such things. Here we go, right there. I've had mine for almost a year. From the outset, the transmitter is dead after about an hour. Well, from the outset, that's not good. Then why didn't you send it back? My, I had that problem after a year. I was told to send it back, but never did. Well, <laughs> sorry, I've lost my sympathy for you. <laughs> um, oh, let me find one here. If you ever buy, I'm, I'm, I'm being mean, but if you ever buy a product that doesn't work out of the box, you've got to send it back right away for a replacement. You can't wait. I mean, I've done that myself. I did it. I, did, I guess I did it with the, with the Roadcaster, right? I should have tested it thoroughly. Once I realized it wasn't going to work for me as an audio interface, I should have just sent it back. That would have been a much uh, better idea. Um, I'm replacing the X5 toy that was, was dropping out. Yeah, I had that issue too. The issue is with the charging cable. You only get one. Well, I don't think that deserves three stars myself. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Batteries die after a couple of short years. I purchased a set of these in October 2019. At the same time, I also purchased the Boss. 
The advertised battery charge per use for the Sennheisers is around 4 hours, and the Boss is 6 to 10 hours. I've got to say, 6 to 10 is much better, but I tried the Boss and that, ha that had dropouts for me. To strike a positive note, in a wireless saturated stage, as they all are now, true, the Sennheisers have way fewer dropouts than the Boss. Yes, I agree. And I would say none, no dropouts. Both brands always outperform the cheap systems. Actually, some of those cheap systems are very good, I have to say. It's now been 27 months of weekly use of both brands, and the Sennheiser's batteries are dying. There we go. They only last one and a half hours. Exactly. While the Boss still lasts for four hours. There we go. I'm disappointed given these are more expensive than the Boss, and they have the Sennheiser brand name. Me too. I don't understand why Sennheiser have let this happen. A brand that's traditionally stood for the very best when it comes to sound microphones and, and wireless. As far as I know, the batteries cannot be replaced. After two years, they go in the trash. So the truth is with that, something that people don't know is you can mail at Sennheiser with, and pay $75 and they basically send you a new set. That's not too bad. Uh, maybe if, if the batteries you purchased were like 30 bucks, I mean, it's not, you're not far off that, are you? And I think they've just sent me new, I don't know, I think they've just sent me refurbished units or new units uh, whenever I've done that. So I don't think that's terrible, but I don't think it should be happening after a year or two. It should be happening after four years. If it happened after four years and I, could, I knew I could send it in and get another one for $75, as a professional musician, I would do that. Because what I would do is wait three years and then just pay to replace them for another three years. But if it's happening after 12 months, that's too soon. That doesn't make any sense. That's crazy. So, Steve says, I'm worried about my S1 battery. The Montabro L206 uses L18650 uh, batteries, which are replaceable. But the same coin is quite as the S1 Pro. Well, the S1 Pro, you can buy a replacement battery for the S1 Pro. And yeah, my original S1 Pro is five years old. The battery's still fine. It, did, it seemed to have a problem, and I was on edge because a lot of people on forums were saying there was some huge issue with the batteries. I think there was a recall of some of the batteries, and mine seemed to have a problem, but I just took it out and put it back in again, and it's been absolutely fine ever since. Uh, maybe in New York next year for who's B oh, Billy Joel's final gig. Wow, you got to Billy Joel's final gig. Have to catch up. Yeah, give me a shout. Kuki says, if you drain too much, it'll eventually destroy the long-term battery life. Yeah, you do have to look after rechargeable batteries, but I've never had that with any other rechargeable battery. That's what makes me suspicious. Did you try the Shure dual band, 2.4 and 5.3 gigahertz? Yeah, I bought that. The, the, newer, the newer Shure system that they released a few months ago, I bought one. And I haven't really used it yet because I bought it for wedding speeches and things like that. But I did buy one. And what I, was, what I was really hoping to do was to use it with the Everse. The Everse has some cool stuff here. Let's talk about that for a second. The Everse 8 has a power output. And this powered output here. Where is it? Ah, at the bottom. Yeah, DC power out, 12 volt, 500 milliamps. I was hoping to run a cable out of there to power my Shure wireless that I purchased. Uh, here's the weird thing that I'm currently looking into. The Shure says it's 15 volts, 500 milliamps, and they told me not to run it through this. I might damage it. But the wireless systems that EV make, that they rec obviously recommend you use with this speaker, are also 15 volts. So I'm guessing I can use the Shure with it. Um, and then the only kind of weird thing about the Everse is you have to buy an accessory tray because the top of the Everse isn't flat. So for seventy dollars, well, sorry, sixty nine dollars, you buy this tray that basically goes on the top of the speaker and makes it flat. And then you can put your wireless system on top of it. And that comes with a cable, but it's the wrong cable for the Shure systems. So I'm thinking about getting this and that cable. And then what you would do is if you had a wedding and they want to do speeches outside. You take your Everse outside, you put the tr you attach the tray to the top, put it on a pole, a speaker stand, and you run out of the power output into your wireless, and that powers the wireless, and then you've got a fully wireless system with very professional-grade gear. So I'm probably going to do that. In fact, I was going to order this today, the, the tray for my Everse 8, and then I'll get the right cable for the Shure, and I'll see if I can make it work. 
like I said, the systems that they recommend, I think it tells you on here. Now, here we go. So the Everse 8 tray easily fits wireless receivers and mobile unit systems, such as the Electro Voice RE3. And it even has a built-in DC power jack for those systems. Right. So if we take a look at the RE3, and I don't really want to buy another wireless system because I bought the Shure system. So here's the RE3 with a microphone. Good stuff. $659, so it better be good. I'm sure it is. I mean, this this is the real deal. Look, this is the the massive <laughs> the massive system with the massive antennas. But if we look at the power requirements for this one, there we go. 15 volt DC. 15 volt DC. And what is the actual, does it say what the actual power requirements are? Let me see. I know this is boring. I apologize. But maybe someone can help me with this. There we go. 500 milliamps, 12 to, oh, 12 to 15 volts. I remember the old version of the shore said 12 to 15 volts. The new version says 15 volts. But I'm, I don't see why it would be any more. Um, so I guess I could try it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too scared to try. I don't want to damage my wireless system. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, this one says 12 to 15 volts, 500 milliamps. The shore is... I'm curious now. I have to check. Oh, there's, there's so many. The GLX, this is what I bought, right? The GLXD Plus. Six there. Same, similar price. And this one says. Ah, uh, that's the problem. It says 600 milliamps. Darn it. Uh, 15 volts, 600 milliamps. So I guess I can't use it. I mean, there's a chance it will work, but you're underpowering at that point. Yeah, that says 15, 600 milliamps. I don't think I don't think it'll be enough. That really sucks. So I guess my only option, if I want to be um, foolproof wireless with the other system, is to buy their wireless system. And people will say oh, it's too expensive. Yeah, well, if it works well, it's fine. This one. So I don't think I'll bother. I'm not. I can just use a cable. At the end of the day, why do you need it? You just buy a really long, high-quality mic cable and run a microphone with a cable. The speaker is still wireless. The speaker is still battery-powered. The mic doesn't need to be battery-powered. Just run a wire, right? Run a cable. So I would buy this if I was doing a wedding every week that did speeches and needed the Everse 8. I would buy this 100%. That would be a great rig. And if you're doing weddings every week, you can afford to buy something like this. If you do a wedding every now and again, just run a just run a long cable. It's fine. You can have the Everse A up there on the stand. It's going to be very clean. No no cables attached. Just that one XLR cable going to the microphone. And hey, at least you haven't got to worry about re you haven't got to worry about recharging the thing. At least you haven't got to worry about any dropouts at all. So that's what I would do for that. But then at the actual gig, I would set up the Shure wireless system and run that into the PA and use that for the actual speeches. For me, that's the most important thing. Um, when you're doing the speeches in the venue and you've got all those wireless things around you. So, yeah. Yeah, it kind of sucks. I'm disappointed that the Shure doesn't work with the Everse 8. There's always something. There's always something. I still might try it because they say that just because something is like 100 milliamps less, it can still work. It's just not what they recommend. So, we'll see. Maybe someone here has tried that and can let me know. But yeah, the short the shore is amazing because it's 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, which is great. At the same time, maybe that's why it needs more power because it's got more all these transmitters inside it. Steve says I've seen some of the S1 battery issues online. Yeah, I did too. I think that's also proof that we need to be careful because I remember a few months ago or a year ago there was a huge thing about the S1 batteries were not were, were not good. There was a problem with some of them. And that was true, apparently. But then I saw people jumping on the bandwagon and saying, oh, no, mine's got, I need to get another one. Mine's like that. I don't know. I thought that too, but mine was just an issue that I fixed with a, with a reset. I didn't need a new battery. My battery's been fine. And I bought one of the first S1 Pros that was ever released. So, be, you know, be wary of, um, of what you read on forums. But 
the best thing to do in that case is to take your serial number, call Bose, and ask them if there's a problem. And of course, I mean, is there a problem? Is it still holding its charge since you bought it? If it is, then there's, there's no problem, you know. All right, I need some water. Do you think now we have technology like Kuki's IR that is open source that is going to make something like the Tone Dexter not as special, or do you think there's something special with Pro Gear? I think that Kuki's IR generator is one of the best sounding IR generators there is, and it's free. I think the problem is people don't understand how to do it. So it's a bit like Apple versus PC. Some PCs are much more flexible and do things that Apple's stuff doesn't do, but people want to buy an Apple product because they just want to turn it on, go on Facebook and use their email. They don't want to get into the technical side. So let's face it, to make, Kuki, and you're, some people disagree with me, but this, this is what I think. When, when, you, when you go to use Kuki's algorithm and make an IR, if you're acoustic guitar, I mean, for a start, you've got to own a door, you've got to own a microphone, you've got to own, you know, you've, you've got to want to, to make that file, and then you've got to buy the pedal to load it into and choose the pedal. The reason people like products like the Tone Dexter is because you buy the pedal, okay, you do need to buy a microphone, but you buy the pedal and the microphone, and you make it, and you take the pedal out, and you use it. That's why people like it. I just don't think that the other IR sounds, I don't, well, I think Kuki sounds great. At the same time, I haven't used IRs in the, in 12 months. I, I just think they're, a comp I think that, I think it's a bit like virtual reality headsets. I think they're the future, but I don't think a lot of people are going to use them today. I think acoustic IRs are the future, 100%. I mean, I think there was a while, there was a time I, I didn't like amp modelers. I thought these were terrible. I just want to play a real amp. But some of the latest amp modelers, and by the way, there's an open source amp modeler called the Neural Plugin now. Nothing to do with uh, Neural GS Neural GSP. Now, what's it called? The NAM plugin, NAM. I think that, and I, I, I was try, I was playing the Tonex the other day, and the Quad Cortex. They sound incredible. They sound. They've got the point now where if I'm playing with in ears, I'd rather take them for the convenience and the flexibility, and use them over a real amp, despite liking real amps. And that's kind of where I'm at with acoustic IRs. I would rather take a great sounding stage guitar like my Cole Clark that has all the controls on it and just sounds fat and punchy and, and long battery life and everything built into the guitar than take a big pedal board with IR loaders and EQ pedals and effects. But I do think one day they will be an impl they'll implement IRs in a way that works just right and it will be built into the guitar or in a built into a multi effects pedal that's very small and powerful and does other things as well and it will become more mainstream. I think it all happened too soon. Either either it happened too soon or the companies aren't putting enough into it. Like I was really excited for the Bags Voice Print DI, but they haven't updated it since they released the pedal. Not really. There's been no like major firmware um, adjustments to it since they released it. So I think the thing is, the electric guitar world has got to a great place now because there's a lot of time and money spent on that. Every week we get a new pedal for electric guitar that does amp simulation. But we rarely get a pedal for acoustic guitars. And when they are released, they tend to be forgotten about. I mean, the, the Tone Decks, they definitely release a lot of firmware updates, but the other ones just kind of released the pedal and that was it. So I think it's the future, but I don't think it's something that I want to bother with today. That's, that's how I really feel about it. Uh, especially when you've got guitars like the Cole Clark that sounds so good plugged in. You know, I get, again, talking about real world usage of, of gear, I get so many compliments on the Cole Clark tone and the guitar, the look of the guitar and the sound of it. I never got those compliments with a Martin. I may have got someone see the headstock that plays guitar and say to me, oh, it's a Martin. But no one ever said to me, that Martin sounds amazing. But with the Cole Clark, I've had almost monthly compliments of like, that sounds great. I didn't know a guitar, guitar could sound like that live. And these are people that don't play the guitar. So again, credit where credit is due. That is the kind of gear I want. Gear that I love, that inspires me to play well. And people, just regular people that don't even play the guitar. That sounds awful. 
people that don't even play the guitar, regular people, not like guitarists, <laughs> um, say say those things to you. It's incredible. I had it just on Saturday. A guy's learning. The, he's learning the guitar. He said to me, "I've got I've got Martins, Gibsons. You know, I've got some great guitars. But what's that guitar? That sounds great. It looks great." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's a Cole Clark. They're very hard to come by right now in America. They're made in Australia, but they have three pickups in them, and they just." They just deliver. You plug it in, it just sounds great. You know, you tweak it a little bit, it sounds great. How many months and years did I spend with impulse responses trying to find the magic source? I just, I just don't want to do it anymore. I do think it's the future because I think the future is digital. I really do. Of course it is, right? It's digital for everything. We don't use telephones anymore. We don't use typewriters anymore. Digital is the future. It's going to be amazing. Like we can now have this little box with all our effects, all our amps, all our mic pre's in it, like the quad cortex. It really does sound incredible. You know, I could happily use that the rest of my life. It's amazing. But we don't have that yet for acoustic guitar. And I don't think it's been done right yet. And I think Kuki would agree with me. It's got to be done in just the right way. And it's got to be done in a way that we can take it with us, which I think means putting it, putting it into a box as a multi-effects pedal for acoustic guitarists. I don't want it to be... Like the tone decks is great, but I don't want to just have that and have to add it to something else. I want a box for acoustic, like like the Voice Live 3 Extreme. I want that with that just a part of that pedal. Right? I don't want the pedal just to be an IR. I want that to be a part of that pedal. The delays, the reverbs, the vocal effects, the looper, the recorder, the, the live streamer in one box. And it's also got that ability to add an impulse response to improve the tone further of my acoustic guitar. That's that's what I want to see. And until then, I'll just use the Cole Clark or an Anthem SL. So, Do you run your wireless system after any pedals or before? I'm not using wireless, but if I was using wireless, I would run out of the guitar and into the pedal board. Because you want it to be first, right? It says everything about the amount of power needed to run a quality receiver. Not sure what you mean. Rose Lee, how you doing? Kooky, not everyone can afford a Cole Clark just to gig. I, I don't I don't even use it just to gig anymore. I play it all the time. <laughs> I haven't played a Martin in months. I think what happens is when you play a guitar a lot, you tend to gravitate towards it. I really think let's talk about Cole Clark for a minute. Cole Clark and Maiden get such a hard time on the forums from traditionalists that think that you should only play Martin and Gibson guitars. And I do love Martin and Gibson guitars for the history and everything, as you know. But the thing is, a lot of it is what you're used to and, and doing comparisons. So if you play like a vintage D28 and then you compare it to a small body Cole Clark, you might say, oh, it doesn't sound as... It's like, it's like if you compare a... 10-inch speaker with an electric guitar to a 212. Oh, it doesn't sound as good. But maybe the 10-inch speaker is what you want for that gig. And I think that's what happens with the Cole Clark. Because I'm, I'm, I gig almost every night. I'm playing that guitar all the time. And then you kind of bond with it. And then you find if you're practicing the next day, you just pull out the Cole Clark and play that again. Um, I don't know. I, I, really think that, I really think they're underrated. And also, my Cole Clark is all blackwood, which is a very hard wood. Which, which is um, great for plugging in. I'm really tempted this year to try one of their traditional guitars. They do make guitars out of rosewood and Sitka spruce. And I would love to get one. I'm, think, I'm thinking about, you know, down the line, getting one of those. But maybe it won't sound as good plugged in, but I'm thinking that, like, something like that would be a... That would be the fair thing to compare to the, to the Martin. Because it's not fair to compare a medium-sized all-blackwood guitar to a dreadnought made of Sitka and mahogany. It just, it's just a different beast. But there we go. And you say that um, people can't afford a Cole Clark just to gig. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, I am. That's my job. So, of course, I'm looking for the tool for the job. Um, if I didn't gig, what would I do? I mean, if honestly, I believe if I played out once a month, I'd be quite happy just to have something like a Bags Hi-Fi or similar in the guitar. I, I don't think I'd care as much, maybe. I think because I, I play plugged in more than I play unplugged, I just really care about the plugged in tone a lot. So, uh, Johnson says, I'm thinking of moving over to dual source. I much prefer dual source. 
I think I, I'm re very excited, and this is public information. Bags are going to make a version of the Hi Fi as a dual source. They've stated that. And that's what I'm really interested in because I like dual and tri source. Uh, in fact, let's see how the Hi Fi is doing over here as well. Three five star reviews and sold out currently. Very good. Very good. Um, now, I do agree with this. No one wants to spend money in R&D to make the next TC play acoustic. I agree with that. And there's no reason why someone like Neural couldn't... It'd be easier for Neural to take the quad cortex and put some more advanced looping, recording, and vocal harmonies and IRs for acoustic into that than it would be for LR bags to make an all-in-one acoustic pedal for solo musicians like the TC Helicon stuff. So maybe, maybe once... Neural are done getting the plugins and the editor and all the electric stuff done on their quad cortex, which is taking a long time, but they're doing it very well. Maybe at that point they'll then start adding stuff for singers and acoustic players. They've said that they would, but it, that was years ago. It's possible. But yeah, there's definitely a small market for the acoustic world. It's a I always say it's a niche of a niche. <laughs> That's interesting. So Kuki doesn't use IRs either. <laughs> Can you talk more about pickup system? Yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk about it um, now to finish up. Kooky, I know it does sound like I'm... I'm just trying to be realistic. Like, I still love... I still love the traditional guitars. I, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm kind of... I'm trying to be more organic about stuff. I'm trying to just look at... It's kind of easy now. Just look look at what I'm actually... What do I actually play? That's what I want to ask people online all the time. What do you actually play? What do you actually play? Like, you're playing that in this video, but what do you... What do you actually like to play? And for me, it's so easy to do that because after six months, I can just stand back and think, oh, so what have I been playing the last six months? The E-verse 8, the QSCs, the Stratocaster, and the Cole Clark. I haven't played my Martin in months. And and that's a lot of that is because of what I do, right? That's that gigging perspective of, of the kind of gigs that I do. The Voice Live 3 Extreme, that thing's been amazing. The Voice Live 3 Extreme is incredible. It's such an old pedal. It's such old technology. And I've been wondering lately what TC could do if they made a new version with artificial intelligence. Maybe it could make me sing with someone else's voice or something. But even for what that thing is today, it's still amazing. The fact that it's got that looper and the effects, and the, uh, the harmonies, and, and the vocal effects, and the, the, the fact that it weighs three pounds, whatever. It's incredible. It's such a great tool. That's the word of the day, tool. What's the right tool for the job? So the right tool for the job for me is the Voice Live 3 Extreme, the Cole Clark, the QSC speakers. Now, that's not to say that I don't want more. It's not to say that those products are all perfect or what they do. They're not, right? Some nights I'll think, oh, bit too much mid-range in this Cole Clark and oh I wish the TC had a had a better um, interface for USB and oh I wish the QSCs had a, a sub built in a mixer built in yeah we can all do that with anything in life right but what is the stuff you actually use that you truly use as part of of what you do rather than the stuff you just wanted to own because someone played one or John Mayer played one so I must own that as well. That's a silly. That's a silly way to to do things. I think that's a dangerous way to spend a lot of money. Um, Graham says I regularly gig in pubs with an Alvarez MD sixty EB, which is excellent, but only cost me five hundred dollars used. I have a twenty year old tailor that's getting worn out, and I save it for songwriter gigs. Cool. Yeah, like I said, use what works for you. So let's do a quick. Um, let me tell you why I like the Cole Clark system so much. And then we'll wrap things up. Biggest problem, I was telling the guy last week, the biggest problem at the moment with the Cole Clark is actually finding one in America. Then There's not any around. <laughs> so on here, this is really cool. You can actually listen to them. You can listen to them through a mic, through an amp, direct, or in a concert hall, which is nice. And there is now a new version of the pickup. I always tell you this advice. 
don't buy a used one simply because i do believe in buying used but with a cole clark you want to get the newer version of the pickup the pg3 is what you want to get and that's not in the old some of the older guitars of course it's a newer system so look for one that has a battery light if you've got the battery light that means it's got the pg3 it may or may not have the fc but the fc is hidden under some of the um, some of the faceplates that they have that button hidden you just buy a new faceplate it's just a piece of plastic as long as you've got the battery light you've got the newer pickup system okay so they say it, they say it sounds like your guitar just loud i don't i don't agree with that i still think it sounds like a pickup by the way it sounds like a big fat responsive dynamic pickup and there's other things too, you know, it has, it's very, it's, it's uh, very clean sounding, it, it, the battery lasts for six months, I mean, you gig all the time, it's a very hot system, it's got loads of output power, it doesn't pop when you plug it in, there's all these things about it that's really nice for a gigging musician. So you've got three elements here, and they're all using crossovers, and there's some good videos on this online. So you've got the undersaddle piezo, which is um, your regular undersaddle pickup, it only picks up the, the bass frequencies. Well, if the face sensor is turned off, it picks up all the frequencies. If you turn the face sensor on, the face sensor, which is like a body sensor pickup, replaces those higher frequencies from the undersaddle pickup with the face sensor frequencies. It replaces them. And that's why it's so good and uh, good against feedback. Now, it will still feed back because the, the face sensor is very lively. And that's why the guitar sounds so cool to me. But that also means it will feed back. It's not like this, these guitars don't feed back. But it's certainly as stable as something like an anthem, and an, anth an anthem is very stable. So the face sensor for me is where the magic is. You know, the maintenance system. I think the maintenance system, the AP5 Pro, sounds more natural than the Cole Clark system. But the maintenance system doesn't have the body sensor, and I love the body sensor in the in the Cole Clark because it gives you that liveliness, that punch. You can really drum on it. It sounds like a cajon. It's amazing. So I actually. Did some recording tests the other week. I actually think the maintenance system sounds sweeter and more natural than the Cole Clark. But the Cole Clark having the three pickups is so is so important to me. And then there's a microphone. The microphone is very small. It's up in the preamp. It's not like a big gooseneck microphone. It doesn't do that much. It will just round off those highest frequencies to round out the piezo kind of sound. So when I first got a Cole Clark years ago, it was in fact a Rosewood Cole Clark that I got from Guitar Center used and I remember I didn't like it I set everything at noon and I just felt I just thought to myself this just sounds like a, re a pickup I just hear it as a pickup so what's the point and I, I took that back to Guitar Center what I later learned when I bought a Cole Clark later on is that you do have to dial it in so you've got a three band EQ and you've got the three pickups what I do is this I put the face sensor Actually, I, this is my almost my settings on this pi on this picture. Funnily enough, you see that face sensor is dialed up to about two o'clock. I do that to get rid of a lot of that understellar pickup sound and get more of the face sensor sound, which is much smoother. That then does make it too mid rangey because a lot of face sensor pickups are very mid rangey. So then what you do is you use the mid control on the preamp to take the mid range down. That's what you do. So you 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 get the sweet spot usually one or two o'clock. I do a little bit less than that maybe on the face sensor, like one o'clock I would do. Then I bring the mid down to, to cut that additional mids that I've added and get a nice balance. Then I put the mic here as well around noon. I don't like to have too much mic. It doesn't feed back. I just think it makes it sound a bit too distant. It sort of rounds it a bit too much for me. So I put that around noon as well. And I put the volume around three o'clock, which gives me a quarter turn for a solo boost if I need even though I use a solo boost on the floor I have an additional solo boost if I really need it which is lovely I leave the FC button out which is the newer mode so if I didn't have the FC button I would just take the faceplate off and press the button out and then put the faceplate back I don't even use the old mode anymore I like the new mode so you don't need to have a new faceplate you can just take the cover off and press the button in and I do find it has a ton ton of bass so I actually to run my bass lower than what they've got in the picture and I also do a low cut on the PA as well because I just think there's way too much bass in this system for me um, that's how I get around it I run a I usually run a low cut sometimes at 120 at least 80 
and then I take the bass down as much as I need on the controls. And that's why I like to have the controls on the guitar, because I can make those adjustments on the fly, especially with the volume. I can just turn the volume up if I need it. Um, but that's how I set it up. This picture, if you ever try a cold clock, then do what they're doing in this picture. Don't just put everything at noon. All right, put the volume at like three quarters. Put the face sensor at one or two o'clock, like either where that white line starts or where they've got it in the picture. Put the mic at 50% or 25%. Put the EQ how they've got it, maybe take a little bit more mid out, and that's the sound that you want. If you just plug everything in and put everything flat, it doesn't actually sound as impressive to me, in my opinion. Have I tried the Rare Earth Blend? Yeah, I have one. I'm going to review the... Fishman mini pedals and I have the Rare Earth Blend. I tried the Rare Earth Blend a few years ago and really liked it. It sounded really natural to me. So I'm going to use one of those for the Fishman video and it is excellent. I, my, my only problem with the sound hole pickups is I don't like having something in the sound hole. The mic is in the sound hole which is the place a microphone is going to feed back the most and so I do, th if you're okay with having something in the sound hole and not going to play with loud stage monitors that will feed back through the microphone, it's a great system. It's probably my favorite sound hole system. It really is excellent. But like I said, if you don't want something in the sound hole, if you don't want a mic you can play on loud stages in the sound hole, then probably not for you. But that is one of the nicest sounding pickups in general I've ever played. So if you have something like a vintage Martin that you don't want to modify and you play once a month, I would put that in there, run the cable out of the sound hole. Oh, in fact, I saw a good tip the other day. Don't run the cable out of the sound hole, run it above the sound hole, up and up and over the top of the guitar so it's not hanging down where you strum. Uh, yeah, it's a great system. I do, I do recommend it. I really like it. One must know that Aaron uses the guitar to make percussive sounds and loop them like Ed Sheeran. That explains why the three-way system works for him. I, don't, I actually don't do it that often. I really, I, I really, I always say that I need that. Like I always, I always hate when a pickup system doesn't have it. But I might use it in two songs. But it does make people look. So when I'm doing Shape of You, Ed Sheeran, I will just do the bass drum sound, which you can do with any system, to be fair. But... When you drum on the sides of the guitar, that's when it sounds incredible. I don't do that all the time. I do that on like one song. I just like having the ability to do it. And it's worth bearing in mind that it will pick up like shirt noise and sleeve noise as you strum. So it's not for everyone. That satin finish with such a reactive pickup system can be too noisy for some. But I quite like it. I like the way the whole guitar feels alive. But aside from that, aside from that it's just a great fat sounding dynamic pickup. That I have not experienced with many systems. You know, I've, I've had nights where I just really get into it. I'm just really enjoying playing. Some systems I just don't get that feeling from. Because they don't, they don't make me feel like a, a powerful guitar. You know, I've had it, sometimes I've had it with the Anthem. And I think that's about it. I'd say the Anthem and the Cole Clark and maybe the Maiden are the only systems where I've, I've ever really got carried away and felt like I'm Jimi Hendrix. With other guitars, I just feel like I'm playing a pickup. And I don't like that feeling. You're welcome, Jonathan. Very good. So, I think I'm going to wrap things up. Thanks for joining me at this weird time. I, I really wanted to go live. I wanted to tell you what happened with Bose. I'm really happy the way they reached out. They've been very interested in my, in my feedback for them. And let's see. If they see if they make the product better, then we'll revisit it in the future. But uh, I wanted to update you and just let you know that tonight, um, that I'm not going live because I'm, I'm playing. And tonight I will be playing for those that are interested. People keep asking me, what are you using then? So tonight I'm going to take the Cole Clark Angel 2 on my back in a soft Moradian back. Those Moradian cases are amazing. They don't make them anymore. Wow, they're so good. Had mine for 10 years now. So that's on my back. My mic stand is on my back with a, in, a, in a sling bag. So I can, that's everything on my back there. Then I can take my mono bag with my Voice Live 3 Extreme or my cables in it. That does weigh about 22 pounds, which honestly sucks, but it's doable. And then the Everse 8 in the other hand in the QSC CP8 tote bag, which weighs about 17 pounds. That's a lot of weight, but the fact that I can take that to a venue tonight 
and play a gig without driving in and paying for parking and worrying about parking and people jumping out in front of the car is a wonderful thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, trust me, that does happen in the city a lot. But that's a great thing and it's doable. Or you can take a cab. I always check the cabs these days and if they're reasonable, I'll just take a cab. But sometimes the cabs lately are just so expensive. You spend all your money on a cab, it's not worth it. So that's what I'm going to use. The one, the one thing I've been trying, I'll give you a little preview of this. I've been trying to make a new iPhone holder based on the MagSafe adapter because the iPhone holder that I've been using is incredible. It's light and it holds the phone just right for me, but I've only got two left and they don't make them anymore. So I've been trying to make a new one. So I found this. I can't find one that I like. I found this. I thought, this is awesome. It's metal. It's a bit heavier, but it's metal. It's got this really nice thing to attach it and you can put a MagSafe um, mount here, which I don't think I have handy, but that just means your phone, the newer phones will just stick to it and it works really well. It doesn't fall off or anything. It, it's a really strong magnet and you just pull it off. The problem is you start to find little issues like that is too big for some mic stands. It needs to close up all the way. And also the MagSafe sits higher up on the phone, so the phone is lower down. So you need some sort of arm that puts the phone a bit higher. And I'm yet to find something. So I'm going through all this stuff on Amazon at the moment. <laughs> which is kind of, it's kind of annoying i can't believe no one makes a really good iphone holder i can't believe it i don't understand it like surely yes i mean i'm not saying we should use them we should learn our songs but when you're taking requests it's so useful to have your phone accessible like that so i'm working on it and if i figure it out i'll make a video about it so other people can buy them from amazon all right, so i'm going to wrap things up thanks for joining me i'm going to head out i gotta to get to my show um have a great week if you're new here, I always do this spiel because it's important to me. If you're new, subscribe and ring the bell. I'm live every Monday and my videos are random. So subscribe and ring the bell and turn on notifications for YouTube. And then you'll see if I post the new video. Um, uh, that's the best way to keep in touch. And I look forward to seeing you here again next week. So I'll see you next Monday, if not before. Oh, one more here from Caro. Got a lot of feedback with the fish from Rare Earth Blend on microphone at stage. Thanks, Aaron. I've only used it within ears. I haven't used it on a loud stage, but I'm just assuming that you will. But what you can do on there is actually blend out. You can take out the microphone and just have the, um, the sound hole magnetic pickup. So with any of these systems that have a microphone attached in the sound hole, you're probably not going to be able to run the mic very loud on a, on a loud stage. That's the downside. And that's why I like the Anthem SL because it's got that microphone in there, but it doesn't. It's, it's hidden in the guitar and it doesn't really feed back. Do check out the Fishman um, Rare Earth Blend. It is a good system, but bear in mind, it is in the sound hole. It does have that microphone there. You have to be wary of any sort of feedback. Again, that all depends on the, on the sort of stage you're playing on. All right, take care and be well. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.